Welcome back. Those beautiful purple flowers you see on the side of the road, they're great pollinators. This week, Charlie and Sharon teach us about asters in the garden. Charlie, it's aster season, and there's so many of them this year. Yeah, it's been a good year for them because we had so much rain, yes. and then we had some heat, yeah. <laughs> so everything just exploded, and there's been lots of color and lots of wild asters and cultivated asters blooming really nicely. It's just driving along the road, just the roadsides are just full of them. Yeah, so yes. the wild asters are really fun because they come in various colors, and I happen to get a little selection here I for know. us. Oh, they're so pretty. Isn't this cute? Uh, so this is all wild asters. Here. And you can see they start with a purple like this one down here, kind of a deeper color. Yes. That's usually if it's in a shadier spot, it'll stay a little deeper color. Um, but then it can go to a lighter purple like this one, more of a blue, I would say. Mm -hmm. Maybe a lavender. <laughs> <laughs> but then it goes all the way to pink, too. I have some of these pink ones near my Yeah, house. some yeah. pink. And then, in fact, there's actually some white ones down here, too, right. that I found, too. All these are just wild asters. They're either the New England or the New York aster. Just wild, one, wild ones you see out there. And these are the most colorful ones. Right. Now, there's the little kind. That's asters too? Yes, these asters are all asters too. These white ones are called panicle asters uh -huh. and these you'll see in like big drifts of them in the yeah. fields. They look really pretty. And this one you can see a little bit different color. This is called a woods blue aster. It's and got a little purple center too. A little yeah. purple center. A little, the petals are a little more of a, a pale purple color. Yeah. And what's nice about these is they grow more of in a shadier area. Uh -huh. And that's why they can keep their color. The wild ones are beautiful but you can see with the cultivated ones they have a lot more petals wrapped around the flower. So these wild ones are really beautiful too, as well as the cultivated ones, because they're great pollinator plants. Uh, yes. Yeah. Bees are oh, the them. bees, yeah. bees and flies and insects of all types really love these, and these are actually been proven to be one of the best pollinator plants that you can grow in your landscape are asters, and it makes sense because at the end of the season, all the bees are trying to build up their reserves for winter, and this is a plant that's blooming really late in the year. Now, can you get this by seed, or do you buy them as transplants? How do you, how, if you want to put asters in your garden. Right, so the it. wild ones you can get as seed. A lot of times they're in a wildflower mixes, okay. but if you want to get some of the cultivated ones, like the one we have here, you can just buy them as plants. Nice. And the New England aster tends to be a little bit taller, the New York aster a little bit shorter, but there's a lot of variations in them. Um, they very easy to grow, carefree, they'll bloom all in the fall, but this one you can see over here has gotten so big it's kind of flopping and open. Yeah. Uh, that means it needs to be divided. Okay. So next spring, what we'll do is we'll dig up that clump, divide it into little sections, replant some here, plant some in other places, maybe give some away. There you go. <laughs> I need some. <laughs> uh, but asters are good that way. Every three or four years, you can divide them and make new ones. Okay. Nice to have color this time of year. Yeah.